Today's lesson is over section 6.2b, where we'll continue to talk about volumes. So here we have a warm-up problem that we've kind of discussed in 6.2a. Here I'm asking to have you find the volume of salt generated by the revolving around the y-axis, which is bounded by y equals x squared, y equals 0, and x equals 2. And so you have the two different methods. You have washer slash disk method, where we could solve for x because we're rotating around the y here, which puts it in terms of y, or we can use shells to keep it in terms of x. For this problem, it would probably be easier to keep it as x squared, so I'm going to use shells. So that means I'm going to be using circumference to help me find um, this area. So we'll go from 0 to 2 for our interval. And so 2 pi times our radius, which is x, and then multiplied by our height, which is x squared minus 0. So in this case, it's just x squared. And so then I'll move the 2 pi out, and then I'll take the antiderivative of x cubed, which gives me x to the fourth divided by 4. And then I'll plug in 2 and 0. Remember, plugging in 0 gets me nothing. So I'll just have 2 pi times 4, which is 8 pi for our volume. Okay, example 5 and 6 is going to be talking about volumes of solids with known cross sections. So here they're going to tell you that the cross sections are a particular shape. So like this one is saying that they are equilateral triangles. And they want us to find the volume of the shape even though it has a circular base of radius 1. And so when they're saying that the, um, the cross sections are parallel, that means that they are like the same for all the way across from end to end of the circle in one direction. So they don't change halfway through. And so first, I need to kind of figure out what my radius is. Since it's a circle base and a radius of 1, I know that the equation is x squared plus y squared equals 1. So I'm going to solve for y. And so that kind of actually gives me part of my triangle as well, because the base of the equilateral triangles, half of it has got to be the radius of the entire circle at any given moment. And so the side of our triangle, or all the sides, since it's equilateral, will be 2 times square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, one of the formulas that we know of for equilateral triangles is the side squared times square root of 3, all divided by 4. And so here you're going from negative 1 to 1, and finding the air or taking the area of x dx to help us find the volume. So I plug in my formula, and then I'll insert in what a side is into that formula so that I can have everything in terms of x. And here I'm able to take out a square root of 3 over 4 and put that out front. And then I'll square that inside part, which also allows me to have a 4 there times that 1 minus x squared, which I'll move out front. So then I'm reducing that radical down to just square root of 3. And then I can take the antiderivative of that and plug in my stuff. Now, if you wish for this, these are a lot of steps here, and so I'm okay with you just kind of plugging them into the calculator. I'm just uh, used to showing all my work so that you kind of know what I'm going to get. And so my answer will be uh, 4 uh, times square root of 3 divided by 3 for this. Okay. Now, another example of this is let's take the same circular base, but now the cross sections are squares. So same radius of 1, so that means the circle's radius still, ha it still is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now for a square, the area is just um, s squared, or each side times each other. So then I'm able to just kind of plug that in with that square already in mind. That allows me to get a 4 out front. I'll move the 4 um, out front of the integral. So I can kind of remove it. Now notice also that our antiderivative is still going to be x minus x cubed divided by 3 from negative 1 to 1. 
So I'll have a similar, similar value uh, towards the end here. So once again, inside that bracket, I'll get uh, 4 thirds, but then times just 4 will get me 16 thirds, or 5.333. So now we'll have problems where we're trying to find the volume of a solid bounded by um, particular curves and areas, uh, but here we're going to be rotating around not a, the y-axis or the x-axis, but maybe a different value. So like for example, seven, we're rotating around the line of y equals two. So we're kind of rotating as if we're doing it with the x axis, it's just that we move that axis up to a value of two, okay? So I will still kind of piece my things together um, same way. And so I'll draw my graph, so x squared is right there, but then I also have the line of y equals x. So it's like the little area in between those that rotates around. But because it rotates around, it'll go on the other side as well. So kind of like the reflection over that line, essentially. And so we can kind of get like a, we'll get like a bullish figure, but there will be an opening at the end. Now, since both of the equations are with x, it'll probably make more sense to use like the washer method. So with that in mind, we actually have two kind of circles going on that we have to kind of subtract. So you have the radius of the outside of the said washer and the radius on the inside of that washer, and we have to subtract them kind of like, so like we would when we have two areas kind of conflicting. And so we want to kind of take out the area in the middle so we're left with just the area in between those two radii. And so first, the big or outside one, denoted as r sub o, um, will be the outside value, which is two. So that's like the overall radius. And then minus our x squared there, because that is the curve. So that'll give us that kind of circle. And then from there, the other line of y equals x would just be two minus just x. So they're very similar, but just with that little tweak of x squared. And so because we're still talking about the area of a circle, we'll have that pi out front from both of them. If you wanted to multiply both of them by pi, that's fine, but we're gonna factor it out anyway. And so then the radii squared minus the little radii squared. And so putting that all in, simplify, that gets me negative five x squared plus x to the fourth plus four x. Take the antiderivative of that, and then I should be able to plug in a one and zero. Remember the zero will just get canceled out because of um, all the terms having X a part of them. So I can just put zero. And then putting that answer in gets me the volume of 1.676. Now example A, it's very similar except we're rotating around a the line of X equals two. So it's more of a like a Y axis rotation and so here, for this one, um, it would make more sense to change our stuff. I could do shell method if I wanted to, but here I chose to use the disk method um, to kind of find my radii, just like I did the last one. Now for this one, the outside, because it's confined by um, x equals zero um, on the left, it's only a radius of two. So the outside radius will just be two. The inside radius here will be two minus that x value. Now our x value in this case is dependent on what it is for the equation there. And so we kind of have to go through and kind of find that. So I'm gonna square root both sides of that first initial equation. That gets me plus or minus square root of y equals x minus one. Add the one over and Notice that I get two, but I only need to pick one of them. So I'm gonna look at the left part since I'm going to use the integral from zero to one for this. Um, if I was going from three to four, then I could use the one plus square root of y. 
it does not matter which one you use, but it just kind of makes it easier for us calculation-wise if we go from zero to one, because then that takes out part of our values at the end from that zero. And so I plug both of those in. So big radius squared minus little radius squared. So it's four minus um, one plus two squared of y plus y. I'm gonna change the square root of y to y to the one half. I can move the pi out front just like always, and then I'll be able to take the antiderivative of that function. Now notice that I get a fraction over a fraction for that middle term, so I'm going to flip it up, which makes it 4y to the 3 halves power divided by 3. And then from there, I can plug in my 1 and my 0. And then my final answer for my volume should be 3.665. Okay, have fun.